Now, when it comes to adopting a Mediterranean diet, it needs to be as easy and convenient as possible. That's why we're not going to get too worried about specific numbers and weighing out exact amounts of food. Instead, we're going to look at using the plate method, a simple, straightforward way to adopt a Mediterranean diet. Now, the plate method simply involves dividing your plate into two parts. Around half of your plate should be allocated to fibre-rich, unprocessed foods, and the remaining half should be allocated to healthy fats and protein. Now, the plate method assumes around an inch of empty space around the food, which you can check by putting the tip of your thumb against the edge of the plate. To make the plate method work, you need to have control of what goes onto your plate and in what amount. This often means serving the portions yourself. So, what should each section contain? Well, let's start with the fibre-rich, unprocessed foods. These should make up around half of your plate. As we briefly covered in the Introduction to Nutrition module, we want to be introducing fibre-rich foods and limiting the amount of refined starches and added sugar in the diet as much as possible. So this means that the fibre-rich, unprocessed section should include plenty of vegetables, beans and pulses, as well as some whole fruits and whole grains. Now this means that you'll be getting fibre, a whole range of vitamins and minerals, and a variety of tastes and textures. Whole grains can also be a good source of fibre and some vitamins and minerals. The key thing to remember is to choose fibre-rich and whole grain varieties and avoid refined starches. Fibre-rich whole grains include oats, quinoa, brown rice, wild rice, buckwheat and rye. Now, examples of refined starches are white varieties of flour, rice and pasta. Beans and pulses are great sources of fibre as well as vitamins and minerals. Now, healthy sources of fats and protein will make up the remaining portion of your plate, which should be around half. Now, as with the fibre-rich section of the plate, the healthy fats and protein section should be made up largely of unprocessed real foods. Healthy sources of fats include oily fish, nuts, seeds, olive oil, avocado and unflavoured full-fat dairy. So, let's have a little look at how we can put this into practice. Some meals will be easier to divide up than others, so we'll look at a simple and more complex example. For our simple example, let's take a smoked salmon salad. In this example, half the plate can be made up of mixed salad leaves, cucumber, cherry tomatoes and brown lentils. These would count as your fibre-rich foods. Now, the other half of your plate could include smoked salmon, feta cheese and a drizzle of olive oil. And these would count as your healthy fats and protein foods. Now, a more complex example could be salmon fish cakes and salad. The salad made up of a range of vegetables would contribute towards the fibre-rich portion of the plate. The fish cakes are more complex and are likely to contribute to both the fibre rich and fats and protein section. In addition to the plate method, there are some other techniques you can use to keep portion sizes in check. The first tip is to wait before deciding to have seconds. It can take some time for your body to recognise that it's satisfied. So try waiting about 20 minutes or so before deciding to have a second helping. The second tip is to eat slowly. Eating slowly can help us to avoid overeating and be more mindful when eating. And finally, try to remove distractions while eating. This mainly relates to TV screens, phones, laptops and tablets. Research has shown that eating while using screens or watching TV tends to mean people make less healthy choices, eat larger portions and are less likely to engage in family communication.